Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com. This is a chart, it's the full moon, 10th of January, set for London. And as you can see, I'm using my colour wheel. Now, this is a part, very minor lunar eclipse. I have to make that very clear. The reason being, here's the south node at 7 of Capricorn, and the sun is at 20 degrees. So it's a fair distance away. So it's not to get alarmed by reports if you go, oh, full lunar eclipse, it's not. And it's not really going to be that visible because of that. However, it's still a full moon. And here's the sun right next, there's Mercury right next to it. And whenever that happens, it's, it's called Kazumi, a lovely name, but it can bring high intelligence or the opposite, the fool, the fool. And also you can see, hopefully you can see this clearly, Saturn and Pluto are virtually exactly joining. That happens to be precise on the 12th of January. Now, the Moon is in Cancer and the North Node is in Cancer. And that's all about emotions and feelings and family. And the headline news, of course, in the UK is to do with Prince Harry and Meghan, and they plan to kind of leave the royal family in many ways. So that's a, a very dramatic and sudden, it appears, a sudden decision. But also, you know, it's bringing up a lot of deep disappointments and hurt feelings for the royal family. So it might not be in your life, but it could well be that you are feeling especially emotional at this full moon. Now, a full moon, it, well, any eclipse can bring up fear because temporarily the sun or the moon disappears. And on Boxing Day, we did have a full solar eclipse. I didn't report on it because I thought no one's going to read about it on a, on a Boxing Day uh, bank holiday. But that is important because what happens is it sets in motion a trigger point, if you like. And the same applies to this particular full moon. So if you have any planet around 20 degrees either side, 2 degrees either side, then this is especially important for you. Now Uranus, notice this, really interesting how astrology works. Here's Uranus at 2 degrees of Taurus and it's just about to move forward. Now Uranus is all about the unexpected, it's the rebel, it's the outsider. It brings change and can be dramatic, as of course the news about Prince Harry and Meghan, his wife. Now, it's in a good relationship, Taurus, to the South Node and Jupiter, especially in Capricorn. So there is a, a positive quality there. So notice that blue line, it always means a flow of energy. And also Uranus, that's called a sextile, another very important dynamic going on here. Neptune. Neptune is in Pisces for a long period of time, and the moon is making a very good connection to it. And that, to me, so much is the compassion that I think, how can you not feel that compassion to those people and, of course, the animals in Australia and the horrendous fires? It's devastating, absolutely devastating. And I don't know about you, but I feel very impotent to, to do anything except, of course, feel what's going on there. Now, Venus in Aquarius will soon be moving into her sign of exaltation. Venus is, there she is, Venus. Venus is visible, very clear in the night sky, if it's a clear night. It's the evening star, and there Venus is setting in the west. All planets rise in the east, that's over here, and they go around and they set in the west. And a clear night, you will see Venus very easily uh, at dusk. So the sun is set, but it's not yet full of stars, shall we say, that sky. Now Pluto and Saturn, coming back to that, is intense. It is stressful, highly stressful. So if you have any planet at 22 degrees of 
Capricorn, they should all actually be in that segment. Capricorn is not enough space for them on the graphic. Then you must really have been feeling this. And fear. I, I listened to Deepak Chopra meditation today, which I really enjoy. And the question was asked, you know, what do I want? And for me, my answer was to be free from fear. And that took me to reading one of my mentor's best books, I would say. And it is called, you can still get it on Amazon, 50 Ways to Change Your Mind and Change the World. And there's a whole chapter all about fear. And very much what he talks about or writes about how powerful our minds are powerful. We create the world we see with our thoughts. And anything from the past that remains kind of buried, which is very plutonic, by the way, any stories of abandonment or rejection, any places where the ego has dominated. This is a very important time for the whole world, for each and every one of us, to do that inner work of healing. And he says, fear is bypassed when our desire for healing becomes stronger than our fear of the next step. Now, that phrase, the next step, in the model, Chuck Spazano's wonderful psychology of vision triangle model, he talks very much about the fear of the next step and can be the fear of happiness, the fear of having it all, the fear of great, great success. But the ego fears change because it thinks that change will be like the past. It's the, oh, it's the unknown. It's that feeling, oh, it's, I don't know what it's going to be like. Fear comes from the heart. It's at the heart of every problem. But also it's important. Fear is trying to deal with the future before it arrives. Now, that's impossible. Even so, I'm an astrologer. I'm looking forward. I'm looking into the future. But I don't get caught up in fate. I do believe we have the power to change, to change our story. And I help people through my spiritual coaching and my workshops to do just that. So if you're caught in self-attack, which can be bruising yourself accidentally, whatever that is, that could be a very good clue for you that you're about to take the next step in your life. The other dynamic of that also is to do with family stories that come up, family patterns, and especially over the holiday period, you might have been with your family and it can be testing, I know, from my past experience. So the higher mind, to contact the higher mind is very much the way forward at this time. And I love the work of Wayne Dyer and his work, his books, I have several of them. One is about the sacred self and he gives very clear examples of the ego versus the higher mind. I, I recommend him. So there you have it, an intense full moon. It is stressful. However, it is going to pass. And I want to make that very clear. The next new moon, which is the end of this month, which is around the 24th, 25th of January, is a whole new, very positive beginning for the year ahead. So if you haven't bought my report, 2020 Star, Your Stars, it might really be helpful for you. And if you are living close to where I live in Brighton, that's the day I'm doing a workshop all about manifesting your vision with the power of the new moon, the new moon magic, and looking at the unconscious blocks that could be stopping you. That's what Pluto's all about. It's about the unconscious. As a sun sign Scorpio, I really do know this territory. I have lived it extensively through all the training I've had. So thank you for watching Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com.